This is Off Planet Radio. Hi, this is Randy Moggins from Off Planet Radio, and uh, this is going to be, it. well, the ESS 60 show, talking about the Carbon 60. I have two people with me today that are just, well, they've become friends, and actually, they are friends. Um, so I have with me today uh, Patty Greer, for whom no website can contain. So, and then we have Chris Burroughs. He's with us from c60evo.com. And Chris, Chris can't be contained by entire universes because the materials he works with are not contained by universes. So Chris, welcome. Patty, welcome. Thank you so much, Randy, for having us back. We're glad to be here. I'm glad to be back too. We have not done one of these for a while, mainly because of all the circumstances that surround this present world, which is the... Um, the contagion that has enveloped the entire world. So the world needs to get healthy again. And I'd like to think that we're a small part of that in some way as well. Me too. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's been, I guess one of the first things I want to ask is the response to the product varies all over the place because we have people that are taking C60 Evo, they're giving it to their pets, they're using it. Uh, and many different different applications. What do you hear these days in terms of a response to the product? What's the latest buzz in terms of things that you're hearing that are good news? Well, the pet one has been my favorite testimonials. I knew it was. You can't fake pet uh, improvements. And a lot of people that have older pets you know, that are laying around and kind of lethargic are the ones that I think are noticing the most. Kind of like older people, you know, when we're sitting around, uh, did I say we? I guess I did. <laughs> um, you know, we become rather lethargic when we are especially younger, older, and really old uh, when we're locked in our homes for six weeks now. So I think that it's a real testament to um, does C60 Evo work? Does it give you flexibility? Does it keep you mentally sane, especially when you're tested six weeks into a lockdown pandemic? You know, I mean, um, so what we're hearing from pet owners, I think has been the best because they're saying, my old dog has new tricks. My old <laughs> dog is finally running around and playing again. But my favorite was this guy that said, my old dog is finally playing with my six-year-old dog and he's even humping her. Oh God, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> There's your test right there. That was really? my favorite testimonial. But with people, I'm hearing things from, um, and again, we don't make medical claims, but what people are saying is my cataracts are gone. Oh my God, that's huge. Yeah, it yeah. is. Um, I can add, um, you know, you, you talked about kind of I I implied old uh, and, and that there is a juxtaposition between young and old. And, and there are some good testimonials on on both sides of that fence. Uh, I've got a couple good testimonials from guys in my office. Uh, one was a former professional football player. Another actually plays indoor soccer. And they actually noticed the day after their first uh, serving of, of the C60 Evo formula, um, one of them, the former professional football player, his wife is a personal trainer and they were actually running, uh, running bleachers. And she, like, she noticed in him and then, of course, he noticed in himself how much better he was doing. Uh, and then we've got this young kid who plays indoor soccer. Indoor soccer is a straight sprint sport. You just get out there and you sprint as fast as you can, as long as you can. And then you like sucking wind, walk over to the bench and somebody subs you. Uh, he went from 10 minutes on the field uh, to 20 minutes after the day after his first serving. Uh, so, you know, the young side is accounted for as well. Interesting. Athletes are where a lot of this shows up with the, with the C60 um, in terms of performance, because obviously they're people that operate at high metabolic rates. They're able to metabolize and quickly bring into their field 
the effects of the product pretty quickly and with some noticeable and, and observable results because they're people that are running clocks on themselves. They have a sense of their stamina, a sense of their strength. And so those are good metrics. But the, the animal one is, is classic because I, we just lost our, our feline friend over um, the end of the year. Uh, Sorry. She was 16 years old and had oral cancer. But I, I know that, that in the time that we had with her, we were working to, um, to bring you know, some vitality back, and C60 was part of it. And you know, even when beings are in that end phase of life, they rally sometimes. And that's what we would notice is there was a couple of days where there was rally and there was a sense that the animal had some joy and still enjoyed its physical experience. And, you know, that's, that's all you get from life really in the end is just to be able to enjoy this experience. Yeah, awesome sure. stuff. Yeah. And, so, and it's so true that, that, you know, their, their animals are just not subject to the placebo effect, Right. If your pet is acting, if your pet is humping again, it's not because it was like, oh, I took a little blue pill and now I'm supposed to be humping. Like it's <laughs> just feeling that urge and doing it. And, and you know, that's a sign of kind of, it, it's not surprising that you get that kind of result uh, from a formulation that doubled, almost doubled the lifespan of test subjects, you know, mammals, specifically rats uh, uh, in that original study. That, of course, you're referring to as the Paris study, correct? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that we want to sometime maybe take a longer look at. Today, we're going to kind of do um, a more general type of thing and even talk a little bit about, you know, what's going on around us in terms of the present contagion. Um, because... It, you know, I, other than the shows that I've done, I, I have a doctor named Dr. David E. Martin. He's not a medical doctor, but he is a medical researcher who holds a couple of patents. But I really haven't had a general discussion and gotten a sense of what's going on around the country. So you are both in distinct geographic areas. Chris, you're in Texas. Yep. And Patty, you are Colorado, right? I am. Yeah. And I'm here in the Keystone state of Pennsylvania. And this is not a symmetrical event in terms of how it rolled out. We rolled out probably a week after the formal proclamation on, oh wait, it was March 11th, wasn't it? 3-11, gosh, I'll, they always hit those 11 dates. And uh, so here we basically hit the lockdown about a week after some of the other states. But I'm wondering, you know, as things are starting to supposedly come back online, I was reactivated for work because I was finally, I guess, certified as becoming necessary again, mainly because stuff is starting to fall apart. You know, computers and systems need maintenance and they need humans to attend to them. They're not attended to. They don't do real well. Yeah. So, uh, but coming back to normal is far from the landscape right now. We're still technically in restricted conditions in terms of travel. Most restaurants aren't open. Uh, I still can't get a haircut. Um, fortunately, mine grew out from the self-care that I gave it. Yeah, I mean, so tell me a little bit about your lockdown experiences. Uh, well, here in Houston, uh, I think it was last Friday uh, that they opened up restaurants again. Um, and I saw lots of posts like coming leading up to Friday. Uh, a, a good friend of mine owns a, a small tea house restaurant. And they just basically did a Facebook live feed and said, we're not opening because, you know, we can only have like six. If, you, if we follow the guidelines where they were opened at 25 percent capacity, they could only have six people in there. And then they got to throw away the menus. And there were, there were so many things that were restricted. It just didn't make business sense for them to open up. 
other businesses and they opened up and you know they're using the gloves and uh and you know you have this sense that they're trying to be as safe as possible um and 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 that's great my family basically we've tried very hard to support the local businesses yeah. uh, to pick up food really and houston actually is one of the cities that we eat out the most uh, I don't. I know the number is really high. I think on average, the average Houstonian eats out five times a week, um, and I think that's far and above what most uh, most cities are at. Uh, so you know, we really go Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We're choosing one of our favorite restaurants and just doing the best we can to support them. Um, and then we're supposed to open up uh, hair salons. Just open. We're supposed to open up gyms soon. Um, and you know, there's a lot of whatever. There's a lot of uncertain it's it's a shame how many people are just being mean to each other right like yeah somebody hates somebody because they're wearing a mask and then somebody hates somebody because they're not wearing a mask exactly. and then somebody's got the mask on but it's not covering their nose and and like it's you know uh there i don't think any one person knows the answer and everybody really is trying to do the best they can i think um and so i i you know i would just ask hey just love each other more and know that, yes. that as much stress and um uncertainty as you're experiencing that person right next to you uh, hopefully six feet away and and i would like to have them with a mask just in case they have COVID. i'd like to be protected more uh, um hopefully you know just they're under the same stress and they may have thoughts about whether a mask is necessary or not they may have beliefs about whether six foot is necessary or not and and it's just difference and we're all trying to figure this out so just be kinder and gentler to other people yeah uh, the the biggest issue that i've had with social distancing is once the threat is gone, or have we diminished ourselves in terms of how we respond to each other? In other words, does it become normal to swipe the cart around somebody in the grocery store or walk on the other side of them as you're passing them on a the sidewalk? And my hope is that we don't lose that sense of human contact. The other side of it is, and I've put this out a number of times in different ways, on social media, Twitter, Facebook, people were to be congratulated because despite all the rules and laws and threats that were leveled against the American populace, as a general population, the people of this country did amazing things. They sheltered in, they took the proper precautions they were very circumspect about what was going on. We took this threat seriously. And I'm proud of the people in this country. I'm proud of the people around me and the differences that we may have about opinions, even in terms of epidemiology and medically, are conversations that I hope we can have when we're not constantly under assault of media information bombarding us. But I hope it's a learning experience and I hope we're less human in the process. I think just before Patty goes, I, I just wanted to add when you, it's interesting because I've always had a very, my wife is from Panama. I've always had a very um, um, international group of friends and it's always interesting. And I, I, I probably recognized it first when I was in college. So you're talking about kind of distance and how much distance do we keep? Like Americans keep some of the mo largest distances of any culture already, right? Um, and so that's gonna, that's just gonna vary as time goes by, probably related to how much space we have. And I, and I think it could easily be argued that New Yorkers with less space tend to be more comfortable close to each other. And mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big function of it. Um, but it's just kind of like a, even this distance is just gonna be this evolving thing where like, yeah, we're probably gonna drive our cart around people and then we'll drive it less. And then it may, it may even become some sort of generational thing like, you know, that guy, Chris, must be really old because he keeps a big distance and his kids don't because they, you know, they don't remember that time. And, you know, we always used to hear stories and mine was like one removed of, you know, Great Depression and saving everything. Yeah. And, yep. and, and that's gone away. So it's just going to be a, it's, in, it's going to be very interesting to observe. And again, hopefully everyone does it with, uh, with some love in their heart. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and I'll just add to that, that, that um, 
you talked about your wife being from Panama. Latin American people tend to be much more close. And, yep. and I, I grew up here in Pennsylvania, and one of the things that people observe here is that Pennsylvanians tend to be much more distant, remote, mm -hmm. more difficult to know. And I was never aware of that until I actually lived in New York City. And when, you're, when you live in a big city long enough, you acclimate to the culture. And the culture in New York is actually very gregarious. It's people mm -hmm. are actually very friendly on the street. And people run up and hug you. And it, it, I don't want to lose that. Yeah. I'm hoping that once we solve this problem, people can go back to being people and embrace everything that there is about us. Because we need the, the herd immunity, too. Yeah. It's a big part of it. Patty, go for hey, it. Tell us yeah. what you think. I like hearing your minds speak because <clears throat> we all are people who love people, good people. And uh, this has definitely been a strange separation. Um, but you and I also have watched a number of separations of um, basically yeah, the loss have. of industries mm -hmm. as they get infiltrated. And I feel like this is a, an infiltration of our entire medical world, where uh, I, I think this will be known as the biggest deception in human history when we get to the other side. So I'm coming from, um, I don't have a C60 Evo poster behind me. <laughs> I've got rocks and flowers because I'm coming from like a totally different matrix of, hi, I watch about eight videos a day to understand what Trump just said, what Pelosi just said, and what does it mean? And I've never been political, ever. I, um, I think I made it, may have mentioned it once before, I went through school with straight A's and a D in history. I had an issue with understanding the Holocaust or understanding any of those horrible people through our history. And so there's something in my brain that's just shut down and practice the piano that many more hours. So, you know, we all kind of choose where our minds go, but in the last 10, 15 years, the intentional separation of our thoughts from our friends, our family, our partners has been really extreme. And if we might remember uh, last year, six weeks before the outbreak, there was this event 201 meeting where mm -hmm. the outbreak was planned as an exercise yep. on humanity. But, you know, they acted as if it was, you know, um, a what if scenario and then boom, wow, how incredible. It happened just like they planned it. And the media was massive because they were incredibly prepared. So it's a, a triply challenging time because the people that watch alternative media have a complete mentality of, oh my God, this was planned. But the people that are watching normal television, like my mother and, you know, people that find my thoughts to be abrasive, uh, have no idea what the alternative media is saying. So there's these two completely different branches of understanding the corona chapter. I can't even call it a virus because it's a chapter. It's another influenza, in my opinion. And we didn't need to lock down the world, but the media told us to. So I've lived through infiltrations. I've watched how those that own the media can spin the dynamics of what the public thinks. So for me, this was like, oh, oh God, here we go again. Down goes the medical world. But here I am in Boulder. And I take so much ESS-60, I'm not worried about getting sick. And I don't mean to be arrogant, but my um, immune system is really powered up. I don't remember the last time I was sick with a cold, a flu, and when my family, my grandkids get sick, I don't mind because I don't get sick. So with this, I'm just not real worried. And another wonderful thing, which when Chris gets into the Bhakti 2012 study, I'm not worried about cancer either because all these stories that I keep hearing about ESS-60, the really good stuff, um, is showing that we're not growing tumors either. So we have all these amazing solutions right here in our hands. This coronavirus, you know, there are all this talk about vaccines, and then I don't want to go into how I feel about that. But here we have hydroxychloroquine and zinc. Bam. An hour later, six hours later, people are cured. And it's been really consistent. 
And here I am taking C60 Evo daily and not worried at all. So, you know, it's a matter of getting over humps of what the media is willing to tell us or turning off the media and finding the information online, which is a lot more, shall we say, updated and appropriate for us. I live in Boulder, <clears throat> Colorado, and my close family owns the most successful breakfast restaurant in Boulder. Fantastic. There's a half hour to 90 minute wait any day of the week, any hour you go. And all they do is breakfast up till two o'clock, always packed, organic. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, they've had to shut down for six weeks. And the stories mm -hmm. I'm hearing are taking my breath away because, you know, it's like I didn't even think about the restaurant industry because I was so busy listening to the nurses and the doctors being furloughed which is blowing my mind that the hospitals are not doing things that people need. So there's going to be unbelievable deaths. And all of us driving around are looking at Boulder Community Hospital parking lots empty. They're furloughing the doctors and nurses. This is so not what America needs. So I think it's a matter of right now, a lot of people are being set up like bowling pins and all of a sudden, the ball's going to roll down the aisle and all of those governors, including yours in Michigan, are going to be removed. That's what I feel because here we are, this really susceptible society, really hungry for the truth. And when you've got Fauci up there who was involved in creating a lot to do with AIDS in the 80s, I mean, Which his history... Which we revealed on this program a few weeks ago with Dr. David Morton. Yeah. David was in my fifth movie, by the way. I think he's yes. brilliant. Yes. Um, but what we have is too much evidence for us not to be moving forward. But then you've got the whole generic media saying, no, no, no. You need to go get your vaccine. We've got this. We don't need to test it. We've got this. So the, the you know, wonderful thing is we're each in this on our own. And I know what I'm going to choose. I sort of have this split mind about things in... I had six weeks here where I was literally locked down and isolated. And I began to do meditation again on a very deep level. And I also began going back to my spiritual roots, which always play into this. There are aspects to this lockdown that I see as, and this goes into shows that I started doing last year, uh, specifically during the, um, the, the winter solstice on, on December 21st, where we were basically anticipating the energies that have begun pouring into the earth right now, as demonstrated by a number of cosmic events that occurred between late December and early January, and this um, Sagittarius and Capricorn conjunction that took place, the weird shifts that we're getting right now with the planets, but even just the sense that on one level, humanity is, is at a threshold. There, uh, there's a lot of division. There's a lot of strife right now because as a race, we're sort of struggling with ourselves in, this, in this, this evolution of what I call the eye of the needle, which is basically this compression cycle we have to go through. But I got to thinking about medicine, specifically looking at this ongoing conversation about vaccines. And then I thought about C60, and, and, and I thought about the work that Chris has done and, and the discovery of C60 at Rice University, and realizing we have a view of, we have a view right now of healing coming from chemistry and medicine, but what if it's gonna come from energy and physics? And that's what's beginning to really fire me up thinking about C60 because, wow, it's something we, we, we have a serving of, we take it. It really comes from another world in terms of what it really is. This super antioxidant, this miracle that we put into our body that we interact with it in kind of a, a field effect. So I look at a lot of this on, on the level that we're going through all of this right now to become as a race, 
the next level of where we're going. And Randy, I don't know if I ever shared with you that the, that the buckyball is the largest molecule that exhibits quantum behavior. <laughs> right? That does not surprise me at all. And, yes. and then you couple that with, it, you know, there's actually a new symbol in chemistry because of this buckyball. The at symbol never existed before, right? Uh, any atom on the periodic chart can fit inside of this molecule. It's superconducting. It's harder than a diamond. It actually turns into a diamond. It's got six-fold symmetry. You can fire it at a stainless steel plate at 10,000 miles an hour. Most molecules would just shred apart. It actually is so resilient. It just bounces off. Um, it's, a pre it's, it's an insanely amazing molecule. Uh, and, and, and as surprised as I really am, I should be a lot less surprised that I'm here talking about a supplement and talking about a study where utilization of literally my, uh, my molecules, the molecules I made and shipped to the University of Paris, uh, helped extend the this lifespan of the rats by 90%. And they died with no tumors. I mean, Patty talked about not being concerned about cancer. I would first say <laughs> the FDA has not evaluated a product that's not intended to treat, diagnose, cure, or prevent any disease. And then I would say, like, that part of the research is, you know, very strong indicator of being a, a cancer preventative. We know things as simple as exercise and better diet and good sleep are cancer preventatives. Um, and we know just from that particular study that there's a, a, a really good chance that, that the ESS60 molecule in olive oil, the C60 Evo formula, uh, is a cancer preventative. Yeah, and again, I, I, I underscore, you know, we're dealing with the product that sits behind you there that we, we partake of in a liquid form, but it came from physics. It came from the world of energy. It came... But, and you know this, the world of material science, yeah, kind of, a, kind of a common playground for you and I in understanding, you know, how these molecules interact and how they form these, these fields and how really nothing around us is solid anyway. I mean, at a molecular level, it yeah. all begins to dissipate into field forces anyway. Yeah. And so, you know, when I think about C60, I think about a product that comes from the future. I'm very much from the future. And having said that, um, obviously, it's, it's a product that's been out there for a while. It's in the consciousness of humanity. And um, a couple of things to talk about today is even we obviously have competitors in this market, and we welcome that. Um, but you have done some studies recently in the field and looking at a variety of competitive products. And let's talk a little bit about what your discovery is in terms of the analysis. Bearing in mind here, we're not naming names, we're not picking anyone out. This is as impartial as it can be, but your company is uniquely positioned to do this kind of work because this is the work that you do and did before you entered the commercial market for the C60 formulations. Yeah, it, it, it's interesting because you were talking about, um, a, really painted a beautiful picture about the science and this coming out of physics and electricity. And that, that is so, so pure, actually. And then uh, it's how unfortunate it is that we ended up in with this industry that is, uh, is so fraught with with, uh, with, I, man, I'm, I'm very loath to say fraud. Like in general, I just, I think people don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're saying. And, and they have products on the market that the FTC would say are fraudulent. Uh, and, and, but I don't think I like to, I prefer to believe that people aren't doing these things on purpose. You know, if you look back at our pedigree, uh, I've been manufacturing, we're the first company to ever deliver uh, any uh, appreciable quantities of C60 to any research institution. And we've been doing that since 1991. Selling to research institutions is the hardest place to sell to for anyone. Because when I say that I'm going to send them C60 and it's 99.95 or 95% or whatever percentage I say it is, the first thing they do is they take it into their lab, 
I don't know how many labs you guys have. I don't know how many labs with HPLCs you guys have. <laughs> Patty's giving right. the zero symbol. Um, right. But I've been selling to customers who have a lab, who have an HPLC, who have the right column, the right mobile face, know what uh, wavelengths, light wavelengths you need to look in order to understand what is the purity of that C60 that I just sold them. So I've never sold into a blind market that's like, well, you got a COA, a certificate of analysis, which by the way, doesn't mean that much. Um, you've got the COA, so you must be selling me what you say you're selling me. No, I've sold to people and been selling again since 1991 to people who don't trust what I say, who test what I say, uh, and then we don't, you know, we don't have returns as as the parent company. And then you look, you fast forward, and you've got this C60 industry. And these people have only sold, uh, first off, they're not scientists. They haven't been working with, uh, with you know, we prefer if you're going to put it in your body. Again, C, I like this demarcation. C60 is for industrial applications. And there is peer-reviewed published research that shows, that proves when improperly processed, C60 is harmful. ESS 60 is C60 that's been processed for safer human consumption. And all of the peer reviewed published research on what I would call ESS 60, again, processed for safer human consumption, shows that it is not harmful. So, so you know, you, you look at this industry and we've got people selling C60 um, and, and really the fraud started with C-60.com. This is a product that I tested. It's the most unbelievably simple test uh, and it clearly does not have any C60 in it. There's none. Now, there are people out there reporting benefits and I'm, again, I'm, uh, I, I'm very hopeful that people aren't intentionally committing fraud. I'm not sure, but I'm very hopeful. Um, and if people are out there and they're getting good benefits, then I'm, I, I, I like keep taking it. Just know that don't take it because you think you're getting the benefits that people who are trying to mimic the results of that famous University of Paris uh, about the study. Because it's not C60. And that was like the first kind of incidence. And we're like, okay, in my mind, I'm like, all right, there's one bad apple. And we don't have to, you know, like, good, like, you knew it would happen eventually, you just didn't know it would happen like on year one of the C60 industry becoming something, right? Um, and then we start looking at other things. I, you know, it was really kind of subtle things at first where I go onto amazon.com and there's somebody selling C60 pills. And those pills, according to their own label, they're saying uh, a, a serving size is two pills. And then I just do the math. If you want to get a full dose of that particular brand, uh, what we would consider a full serving size, right? Well, a five mLs, the amount of ESS60 that's in the five mLs, you'd have to take 20 of those pills. And their, their, their serving size or dosing, whatever they're calling it, is only two. So this just bring, gives me like intense fears about people being exposed to C60. And obviously, I don't have this fear because with ESS60, uh, we're able to kind of protect the consumer. But hey, you should try the C60 stuff. It's done amazing stuff for me. And then you go buy this bottle of pills and you read the bottle and you take the two and you've got one tenth of a serving size and you don't get any benefits or, or the benefits you're getting are so small that you don't really attribute it to anything. And then you're out there spreading the news that you tried that, oh, oh that C60 stuff, I tried it and I didn't get any benefits. So that was, that was one even earlier than that, there's a, a bottle of activated charcoal that says potentialized C60. Uh, and I think I make a joke about it. Potentially, it has C60 in it, but it doesn't. Like, there's no, I just did a quick test. There's no C60 in it. Why would you put C60 on your label unless you're just trying to defraud the consumer? And so I start looking at more and more of these and then I'm like, I really want to canvas the entire industry. So I ordered like 20 plus um, brands from, from everywhere uh, and different, you know, olive oils or MCT oil. The other thing that was really frustrating in our industry is, you know, a number of businesses built their entire business on this purple MCT oil and never shared with their customers that MCT has about a third as much of the ES, well, really C60 in this case, who knows where they're getting theirs from, um, has like one third of the C60 compared to the olive oil. 
So scientifically, it makes more sense to just stick with the olive oil. And the reason you would do that is because that's where the research is. Um, conceptually, okay, it's in oil. It's probably dissolved. It's probably, you're probably going to be as good. And you're not getting as much, right? So your typical concentration in olive oil is about 0.8 milligrams per milliliter. That was olive oil. In avocado oil, it's about 0 0.6, 0 0.65. By the way, these are all natural products. So there is definitely variation from back, batch to batch. And then MCT is about 0.35. So you're comparing a 0.8 product to a point. Explain what product. MCT is again, please. MCT okay. is medium chain triglycerides. So basically you tip it, like it originated out of coconut oil and you break out just the median, medium chained uh, oils in it, lipids in it. Um, and then that, if you got to be careful even about MCT, because if you get it from palm oil, palm is destroying like our rainforest and so you got to be really careful that you're getting the right stuff it's kind of why we even though it has less ess 60 in it it has the same price as the olive oil because you know mct you can get anywhere mct that's organic is much much more restricted and then when you say organic from coconuts now you've just gotten a really narrow uh, distributor group and it's the for us we believe it's the right thing to do so businesses built their entire business on this purple MCT oil uh, and they're not sharing, they're not forthcoming with their, uh, with their, um, to their customers that it doesn't have the concentration of C60 or ESS60, if you want to put it in your body, uh, that they're just not being honest in, in my opinion. Also, they're just, they'll say anything. If a customer tells them, you know, I don't know if a customer tells them my telomeres are getting longer, they'll hop on a podcast and say my telomeres are getting longer. Uh, <laughs> it's proven that, uh, that, you know, they'll say it's proven that C60 will extend your telomeres. Well, okay. Where's the evidence? And you know, I'd, even if you just had anecdotal, not anecdotal, even if you just had like one test, at least it's a test, but there's no evidence. It's just like a lot of hand waving saying that this is, um, a, a lot more than there's evidence to say. So you won't see that from Patty or I. Patty's very excited and I'm glad we're on because I kind of reined that excitement in a little bit and, and put some of the science behind it. <laughs> um, uh, but anyway, that's, it's just, it's just, you know, I'm, I come from a science background. Science is not perfect, right? There are, even in the early days of, of, of buckyballs and fullerenes, I went to symposiums where, where two researcher group, actually it was one researcher group at Exxon was denying that uh, the group at Rice actually had discovered this molecule. They were saying, no, your evidence doesn't support it. There's no reason that you should, you know, your original publication in Nature shouldn't have happened. Like, and, and this is like people screaming at a scientific convention, which part of you is like, you know, it should be like this peaceful and it should be this, uh, uh, you know, black or white, science is black or white, but it involves humans. And so that, that's what happens. Um, in our industry, it's just become gray a lot faster than I had hope as, hoped as a scientist. So across the samples that you took, um, what did you discover? You, you, you sort of referred to a couple products. Uh, in the general sampling, how did it break down and how did things stack up? Uh, the phrase that I tend to use is that the uh, concentration was woefully low compared to what's on the labels. In some instances, uh, it's it was claimed to have 0.5, and it was actually 0.05, so one tenth of the concentration. Um, so these are parts per million, is that correct? Well, well, it's just straight percentage. So it's like okay. if you've got one milliliter, right, and you can get one milligram, which is an, a very small amount, but you can only get. I remember you can get about 0.8 milligrams, so not one full milligram into one milliliter. And, and if you kind of think way back, a milligram is nothing, uh, and a milliliter is pretty small volume, but normally you can get more. Actually, I should probably kind of come up what's the what's the concentration of sugar and water. That would be a really good way to compare it because everybody has a sense. Actually, sugar and water, uh, you can do about a one-to-one, -one, right? Um, I don't know what that means in terms of milliliters versus milligrams, but it's like a 50-50 ratio. So, um, so they were supposed to have, po uh, they were supposed to have 0.5 milligrams per milliliter that was on their label. Uh, and when we tested it, it was 0.05 milligrams per milliliter. That was an avocado 
uh, oil. I'm certain that they just got the math wrong, though. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> I'm certain they just got the math wrong, though. They moved yeah. <laughs> that zero. You know, it's it's confusing it's when carry you carry the one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When you get on the other side of the digit. Well, there was like one company. Just real quick, and I'll turn it over to you, Patty. There's one company. They literally have two bottles. And it's two different volumes. So one was like, I'll just make this up because I don't remember. So it's not the exact numbers. One was four ounce. One was eight ounce. They both had, and it said that each bottle had exactly the same amount of C60, right? So obviously, like according to what I just described, one of them has a higher concentration than the other because one of them has more volume, but the same amount of C60, one of them has less volume and the same amount of C60. So obviously one of them has a higher concentration, but on both boxes, it said maximum concentration. So like, and then I actually gave it to my um, director of research. He squirts it on his hand, he smells it. It smells very metallic, very, um, the, the right phrase is like a, like a, a carbon, uh, a graphite uh, connector. I don't know if you remember the RC cars that would race around and you would have the one trigger sure, yeah. and it goes faster. Yeah. And they had a very particular kind of metallic -y smell. Mm -hmm. So this oil had a metallic -y smell. And, and, and at the time, I, you know, I don't go back in the lab and work on mixing stuff as much as our director of research. And he goes, oh, that stuff's been sonicated. Because when you sonicate it, um, it's, it gets this burnt flavor, this burnt smell. You can, you can taste it through your skin. It's so bad. Um, and, uh, and, and, and sure enough, you know, it, clearly it was, it was sonicated and, you know, you should, by the way, you should never sonicate oils. You will actually do damage to the oils. It's a great way to make things go into solution faster. So if you're just trying to short, do it, take a shortcut and just take C60 and shove it into oil. Uh, but it does damage. So to the what oil. does sonication do? Is that like an ultrasonic pulse or something like that? Yeah. So if, imagine the, uh, maybe you've seen a, uh, a ring, a jewelry cleaner, yes, right? Exactly. And it makes yeah. this really uh, high pitched noise. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's ultrasonic. So if you just filled it with water instead of sand, and then obviously, cause you want to keep the water and oil separate, you might take a glass of oil with C60 in it and stick it in the water. So now it's being bombarded by all these uh, uh, sonic waves. The challenge is, is at some point in this medium, multiple waves from multiple directions peak all together. And when they peak, you actually get localized, very nanoscale, but localized temperatures of the sun. So you can imagine wow. you yep. really wouldn't want your oil. So it's, it, it's not that all of your oil is being exposed to the temperature of the sun immediately, but the longer it's sitting in there, the more micro spots, nano spots are being uh, uh, exposed to this temperature of the sun and it's absolutely damaging the oil. You can smell it and taste it. Interesting. So across the sampling that you did, what was, what was the average and can you compare that to the, the concentration of the uh, C60 Evo? So I, I didn't I didn't pull an average. Um, C60 uh, Evo was better, except for one brand, and we'll talk about that in, in, in a second. Um, and I don't really have an average. Uh, I think the the next best. I don't. I just don't. I, I don't remember the numbers. I didn't pull an average. No, that's okay. I, I'm not I, trying to pin you down. It was on. it was low, um, and it was lower than you would be comfortable with. Remember when you start getting into these types of situations, labeling types of. I got my bottle right here. When you get into labeling situations, um, when you say it's 0.8 milligrams per milliliter, and it's anything less than 0.8 milligrams per milliliter. It's actually an FTC violation. It's it, the FTC considers it fraud. So, like you're selling something with a label on it that isn't what's in the label. And in general, people kind of assume, hey, it's on the label. That must be exactly what's in it. And then it's not. It's not one manufacturer. It's not two manufacturers. It's not three or four or five. It's every other manu manufacturer is delivering a product that's woefully low in in carbon sixty. So that's why, really, let's create this demarcation, ESS-60, safer for human consumption. Look for ESS-60, and you'll know that you're getting a great product. So How you guys you... are the scientists. Well, no, but you had something you wanted to, to, to bring in. Yeah, I do. And I'm a documentarian. So for me, um, I don't do the analyzing. I do the recording of fact. And so 
what I've learned from seeing other people's labs of C60 and then seeing Chris and Rob's lab in Texas is that there's only one lab that I know in America that has gear and equipment. Um, the other labs that I saw were pretty much Amazon mixers in basements and garages. I, I think that pretty much that represents what's going on in America other than Chris's uh, parent company that's been manufacturing ESS 60 and C60 for 29 years. So the reason I think that they're woefully low, and I'm just gonna guess because I've been looking at the details, I do remember the averages because it took Chris weeks to tell me the truth about the top companies because um, he wasn't sure the choke chain would work. <laughs> I got it. I got I had it. to wait for the appropriate choke chain from Amazon <laughs> so, to get delivered. <laughs> right. Well, uh, you know, Amazon. So um, <laughs> yeah, really. the punchline is they were all one third to one tenth the concentration that they were supposed to have had. And when I say supposed to have had, Chris's lab and his head scientist mm -hmm. tested all these different oils to see if I put in more than they possibly need and mix it the way they mix it, which is after many years, they know to put it in an airtight vessel that spins for three weeks. No light, no air, no stopping. And so this all is a, three a sealed centrifuge. Uh, yeah, no, right. it's, it's, it's a mixing, so we've got a mixing paddle, okay. uh, but it is a sealed container, and that sealed container okay. has a nitrogen buffer gas, so it's not exposed to, like, you've got it mixing. You can imagine when you're doing mixing at a high speed, you've got this vortex going in. If you're exposed to, if you've got air, then you're just basically folding oxygen into the oil, which is, you know, what you don't want to be doing. So in our case, it's, it's, it's got a nitrogen buffer gas. Got it. Okay. I was and picturing I a centrifuge. The punchline is they, uh, at Chris's lab, they put in more C60 than they possibly need in every batch. And so what happens is the C60 that doesn't concentrate into the oil evenly will go to the bottom and uh, they'll use it in another batch perhaps or whatever it is that they do at the lab. But what you want to do with every batch is to put in more than you need. And what they learned is that olive oil, no matter how much, no matter how long, if you do it properly, you're going to get 0.8 milligrams per milliliter, give or take. And when he gave the numbers, avocado 0.6. So when you've got companies that don't have an HPLC machine, which stands for High Performance Liquid Chromatography. Thank you. Nice. Um, and most people don't. They just have a garage or a basement and a couple of Amazon mixers or 20 of them, you know, who knows. But if they don't have a machine to test their batches, they're not going to know the concentration. And I want to mention as just a consumer the difference that I learned about concentration or purity. They are two different things. And you're constantly going to see this in people's titles when they advertise. The concentration we know can be 0.8 milligrams per milliliter in olive oil, but the top brands aside from ours had 0.3. Mm. The bottle said 0.8 or maximum and tested at a third party, but what? Your neighbor hauling the trash out, here's a spoon. I mean, who's the third party if they didn't test it in an HPL machine, yep. HPLC? Yep. So um, with these claims being... 0.6 for the avocado was actually 0 0.06 with one of the major companies. So, you know, I know they don't have the gear, but my question is, is this intentional or not? So concentration is how much C60 is in that bottle or in those pills. Purity is a different thing, which is about the manufacturing process. Uh, and it's about the amount of solvents that have been removed. So purity, when you're talking about ESS-60, I'm allowed to say 100% pure ESS-60. But when I'm talking about C60, there's all these different variations depending on who you buy it from. I think one of the problems aside from people not giving us the concentrations that their bottles say is that a lot of it's coming from China. A lot of people that Chris knows he used to sell to, if they haven't bought in a year, a year and a half, where are they buying? Because there's not that many options. China. Yep. And not just China, but I got the letter myself. It's Wuhan, China. Now, Chris said, we don't know if that's the plant 
or the distribution house, but it definitely was an invite from Wuhan, China for me to buy 99.99% C60. So I, I only will do ESS60 from Chris's lab and it's our business together, which I'm really, really proud of because I trust it and I know what I'm getting and I know they test every batch. So the purity is questionable and it's only about solvents. So when he was talking about the one company that did actually almost compete with our numbers, it was probably the Canadian people selling sonicated C60. And what he was saying is they had a little bit more even than we did in concentration, but it was toxic because it was sonicated. And um, Chris, why would it be always a lot more expensive if it was sonicated well? Okay, so we'll do we'll a couple of things here because um, I think think there, there's a, a little juxtaposition of some information. Uh, so one is that uh, the, there, you know, there are people who will talk about in order to get uh, a, a C60 that has effectively never touched a, a solvent. By the way, solvents are used regularly. When you, anybody who's ever done plant extracts, um, uh, you know, you go into GNC, any of these plant extracts, they'll have whole shelves of them. Right. Most of those are, are actually concentrated with solvents. The industry knows how to get rid of solvents. It's not rocket science. It's kind of, kind of easy, actually. Um, so one of the things is that, that particular, one on the oils. So there are actually olive oils that can hold a little bit more. Uh, we've got an olive oil uh, that we've tested that's at about 0.87. Uh, and then we actually have olive oils that show, show up lower, right? Again, it's batch to batch. Um, but in general, one particular brand tends to be, you know, plus or minus a couple percent around whatever the target is there. So it's important to know that not all olive oils or even MCTs or whatever are at the 0.8, the 0.665 or the 0.3. Um, so that's, that's important to share. The, the, the next thing is, is when we tested all of these products, the 20 different ones, First, what we did is uh, injected it into our HPLC standard process and figured out what the existing concentration was. Then we actually took that oil and we added our own ESS60 to that oil to figure out what the concentration could have been. Did like maybe they just have a really cheap oil and it doesn't hold that much C60 in their case. And, and so we wanted to test that we could always get more C60 into the oils. And, and to talk a little bit about what I think people are doing, because I tend to believe it'd be alt altruistic, people are just following uh, the protocol in the original study, and they're saying, great, our concentration is the same as that original study. Slightly different oil, problem. Uh, slightly different process, C60, problem. Uh, if you're not testing with HPLC, like that's a problem. You can't just make that assumption. Um, you know, and again, we come from a scientific background. We, we've never made that assumption. We're always testing our material. So, so that's, that's important. The, the next thing that I wanted to add is there is one company that had a higher concentration than us. It's the same company that we used to sell C60 to. And the reason we, we actually stopped selling to them we realized this was early on. It's probably late 2017, maybe early 2018. Um, we realized like this industry is exploding and everybody who's buying it from us is actually buying it to put in oil and dig to, to, to give to people. We had already created the demarcation between really C60 and ESS60. This company we figured out was selling, was buying the, the C60 for industrial purposes and putting it in oil and selling it to people. And we called them and told them they need to buy the right material. Uh, and they said no, and we stopped selling to them. Now, why do I tell all of that story? Like kind of throw this, this company under the bus. If you have solvents present, you can actually get more C60 into the oil. That solvent, think of it kind of like a, an interface between the oil and the C60, which allows more C60 to go into solution. But you heard me properly, the presence of the solvent around the C60 is what enables more of the C60 to go into solution. So the solvent binds to the C60, is that correct? Yes. And, and it's and actually creating a denser field around it. 
It, 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 it's interface. It's what it does is it opens up the interface so that then it can dissolve more of it can dissolve in olive oil. Okay. Right. And so, um, so that company like one, yeah, sure. I was disappointed that, you know, they have a higher concentration to us than us. And two, I'm like, well, it's not that surprising. Like, you know, they, they've been buying the cheapest, uh, C60 they can possibly find. And that probably has solvents in it. And when it's got solvents in it, more will go into solution. And then I think Patty was alluding to one more thing, which is sublimation, right? So sublimation is the process of heating something in one location so that it turns into a vapor. So you could imagine that if I had a tube and I've got ice in one section of the tube, I can heat the ice and it'll actually turn into a vapor and that can have a flow of gas and on another side i could cool it back down so i would start with solid ice it would become a vapor and then i would end with solid ice right and that will have effectively gone through um like a distillation process right so right. anything that doesn't have the same boiling or sublimation point as ice over on this side is just going to get stuck there and end up on the other side. So you can sublime C60. C60 doesn't go into liquid phase. It goes directly from solid into gas at a very high temperature. So you need very sophisticated equipment to manage this process. And when, when, so then it would go into a vapor. Again, it would get carried further down. It's cooler down the tube, right? And in this case, kind of like freezing the ice again, it's cooler. And so you end up with bands or one section of it uh, where the, your C60 resublimes, right? So it, it, it resolidifies. This ends up being pure C60 that obviously if there, if there were any, um, what's the right, if there were any uh, uh, solvents in it, they would have just carried straight on through. Um, and so that's what would have happened there. Um, the problem with this process is you end up losing about 50% of your C60 material. So anybody who's saying that they're using sublimed C60 uh, or even selling sublime C60, and it's not significantly, like in the neighborhood of double the cost, um, they're probably not really subliming the C60. Uh, some, something else is going on. I've been working with C60. I've been working with research institutions around the world with the sublimation process. This is what we find consistently. It should be significantly more expensive. Also, because, because, it, it, because it's gone through this kind of, let's call it an extreme baking process, it's significantly harder to get it to go into solution. So the crystals that form in this space are much tighter closed pack crystals. Those yes. closed pack crystals are significantly less um, prone to open up uh, when exposed to the oils. And so then you've got this mixing process that now needs to be a lot longer because you've got these very closed packed crystals of C60 uh, that are not prone to dissolving. That was very geeky. I hope. I hope that was real geeky. But that's okay. We have a geeky audience, and they come <laughs> here to get what other people won't tell them. And besides that, I ask those kind of questions. So, in terms of solvents, and I'm I'm going to reference back here a little bit to years ago when I was doing research into another field, which was cannabis oil, and specifically the work that Rick Simpson was doing up in Canada at the time, which was groundbreaking. Simpson was seeing significant healings of tumors as a result of the work that he was doing. He came under a lot of criticism later on because obviously Rick Simpson wasn't a chemist. He did not possess a sophisticated laboratory. And he was using some pretty brutal solvents in his product that got him criticized. Rightfully so, but you don't kill the messenger. The man was basically bringing us a technology that's now come forward and been refined because there was a market interest in this product. Yeah. So, you know, he was a pioneer, but pioneers ride Conestoga wagons. They're not, they're not driving, you know, a, a, an SUV. Right. So right. having said all that and understanding that there is a certain process in these type of um, formulations, the solvent itself, and then the process by which you are, I'll use the term washing it. You can correct me on that. Yeah. Okay. If that's not the correct term. A, well, well, certainly oven, vacuum oven baking and then a proprietary wash process. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So in the 
how much variation do you believe there is in the industry in terms of potential toxicity of both the solvent and perhaps even the efficacy of the wash process? Um, so, so I really haven't visited that, uh, that particular situation. One of them is it, if they're buying it from us and we know that they're putting it in oils, right. then we're making sure they buy the right stuff. And I just gave you the example. And it actually cost us money to not sell it uh, to this kind of cheapskate, if you will. Um, but, uh, but, but it was the right thing to do. So one, we really haven't d dug that far into it. If they're not buying from us, then I don't know what they're getting in terms of what kind of solvents are there. Uh, I know that we've po we've we've tested our ESS 60 in our in our olive oil, and the the standard test to use is the EPA's guideline for safe amounts of solvents in water. I know that we're 10,000 times lower than the EPA's designation of a safe amount of solvents in drinking water, not just not just potable water, I mean, in potable water, not just regular water, but in actual drinking water. Okay. Um, that's a test that I know about our products that I don't know, uh, that, is, that is not a cheap test, uh, and it is not a test that we did on all of those samples of other people's products. Okay, I just wanted to toss that out because we were you know, basically dealing with these aspects of it. And it also gives, it gives people a background in what to look for and what to even ask people who are marketing these products. Yeah. I mean, you're here, you're open, you're accountable. There will be comments down there on the page when we put this up on YouTube and, and people will comment and they'll ask questions. And that's the kind of open dialogue that I would like to see in any marketplace. Yes. So that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, even though this isn't live and you can't actually text in, most of the time people aren't that interactive, but we get interesting comments. Yeah. And those comments, you know, questions are welcome. And if we have good questions, we'll certainly pass them along and you'll see them. Yeah. Cool. What was interesting was that when we announced on our first few shows that we had tested 22 online products from different companies, there were trolls that showed up. Like all of a sudden, yeah. we got some serious um, large animals backing up and going to the bathroom on camera. I mean, the really rude, 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 rude. And there were like five a day, every day, right after we announced. So I think a lot of people that are concerned about they might have been caught. Um, lucky for them, Chris and Rob <laughs> have the integrity not to yeah. mention their name. And I have a choke chain, but he put an electric thing on it. So if I even start, <laughs> you know. That was the Amazon upgrade that I was waiting for. <laughs> so I think I learned my lesson. Colin? Yeah, we don't yeah. need to name names. But, you know, again, what I've learned from this um, working with Chris and not mentioning the names, it's, it's not about dissing other companies. It's about encouraging people to seek ESS 60. If you've got questionable stuff over here, you've got 20 companies, you don't know if it's from China, you don't know if the concentration is a tenth of what the bottle says, and you don't know if it was uh, manufactured in a clean room. Yeah. But you do with the SS60. So here I am, I'm just a girl, I've gone through some interesting tests of, are you gonna live through this one? And man, ESS60, I'm just daily, and I, I feel incredibly strong and I do like to brag that Chris is 50. He's not 30. And when you look at him, he looks like a kid. His skin is gorgeous. He does. And um, I'm in my mid-60s. So, you know, I'm coming around with, uh, you know, the ESS 60. But uh, I swear by it. And I realize that, you know, it's an investment. And it's been since the 1980s proven uh, financially to be more valuable than gold per gram. So you've got a product that, they own the lab. They invented the machine. They're on invention number two. Chris told me the, you know, an upgrade of their original 1991 design. But, you know, even then, they can't bring the price down because it's a very tedious, difficult process if you're using the good stuff and doing it correctly. Yeah. So um, we do, because we're the lab making it, you know, it all comes from one place. It's manufactured. The C60 is fresh from the lab. The oils are all the best, pure organic, and it's mixed correctly. 
and it's shipped from there. So it's all in one place, which for me makes me feel more safe when it comes to my body. If I had pets, I don't feed my bobcats, but um, <laughs> I, I know that I do gift it to my family and I'm seeing improvements in their dogs um, and their dogs um, do the treadmill 10 minutes every day. So those are our C60 Evo dogs and they're going faster. They used to kind of bump each other and crack jokes and now they're just <laughs> So yeah, we're seeing a lot of improvement. I do want to mention that um, when people sign up for a subscription, they get it every month delivered. You only have to sign up once and you get a 20% discount with every order. And if you use Randy's special code, you get another discount um, and he gets uh, a nice commission for all the sales that come through his show, which um, supports him, supports us, and really supports the ESS60 industry. And our company, C60 Evo, is named after evolution. So what we're doing is bringing the evolution of C60, rather than fighting this sloppy mess where people are perhaps you know, not, not selling products that are up to par, um, we're just kind of moving forward and, and creating something new. Rather than trying to fix something that's broken, we're creating something new. And I think that- There you go, I've that's actually, awesome. Robert, you know, they were just moving into the ESS 60, um, you know, as far as terming the product. So, uh, you know, we're going to try and really keep our focus away from generic C60 because yeah. some of it's Chinese, some of it's industrial, and you don't want to be putting that in your body. And I, and I can, hey, Ran, sorry, Rand, I can add That's one good. small little story, which is we'll get an email from time to time. And I know Patty's seen these where we're like, hey, I was thinking about taking that other product. I'm taking this one, which is not ours. I'm thinking about taking that other one over there. Um, what do you think? Is that a good, reputable product? And 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 in that particular case, actually, it was the one that we stopped selling the C60 with solvents to. So I told that story and I'm like, yeah, you shouldn't buy, like we stopped selling to them. And by the way, if you're asking us for your opinion, like if, if they're a good brand, you should probably just trust us and just buy C60 Evo. That's what you should do. And to point out too that your company is also the largest single source provider of C60 in North America. Yeah. And has been doing so for how many years? 28, 29. Yeah. Yeah. A long um, time. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're talking about buying from source as opposed to going through some rather dodgy channels to get a product that you may be less than happy with. Yeah. Patty, you were talking about your skin. I wanted to ask you, C60 topical, you use the oil as a topical. Are we, is, are, is this an application? I have been. And uh, Chris and I kind of joke because um, recently he told me that he cleaned the filter out on the uh, machine and he had all the C60 sludge. So he started putting it on some of his wounds and there he goes putting it on his face. But he was taping it on wounds. And here I wow. am with, you know, these cuts in my fingers from 16 years of mercury poisoning. And I'm like, send me some of that sludge, please. Wow. So my hands are looking better. And I mean, you know, I've been challenged is a nice way to say it. But if it weren't for this product, I don't think I'd be here. So I'm super grateful. But on the skin. So here I am. You know, I know what it's done to my intestines. I would say I've been like a snake. You know, I feel like everything has shed its skin and I feel very renewed. So now I start putting it on my face and it's peeling and my face is peeling. And so I'm looking at it close in these little, you know, 10 times mirror and I'm taking my little tweezers and pulling chunks of skin off. And what's happening is I feel like a new me You're is coming and growing through. Your skin. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it really, um, it neutralizes free radicals. It's got a more than 172 times the power of mm. vitamin C. How could it not be good for your skin? Yeah. So I have expensive, you know, facial products, but I never, ever put it on without also pouring some ESS-60. And I'm using the coconut oil because 
um, I don't want to be taking it on a spoon uh, when I could be taking olive oil more than twice as much C60. So I'm using my coconut oil up by putting it on my skin, my legs, but I pour a little bit into my oil, my lotion that goes on my legs and arms, and I am seeing my skin come around, but the peeling really surprised me. I mean, again, it's like a snake. You know, I just feel like I've taken off a layer and um, I had a lot of brown spots. You know, they're, they keep peeling, then another one comes out. So I'm experimenting. I am the lab rat. And sometimes, you know, paranoid people say, well, it hasn't been tested for years. You know, we don't know. I'm like, hey, I've been on it three and a half years, a tablespoon a day, which is three teaspoons. Uh, sometimes, you know, I just tip it, like don't even know how much. So <laughs> I feel like I'm the lab rat. And I've mentioned, I mean, I could do a show on what came out of me this week because it's just really pushed out a whole lifetime of toxins, um, which has been shocking. Chris um, corrected me when I told a customer, no, no, you don't want to cook with ESS 60 because, you know, and Chris said, no, slap it on your steak and grill it. And I was like, what? <laughs> and he said the ESS wow. 60 actually helps the oil not uh, go rancid. So you can throw it in your salad you can, you know, because it's organic olive oil. You, you know, I like it on a spoon because boom, it's down. Plus I can swish it in my teeth. And I'm finding when I do, I don't have um, plaque mm. behind my teeth. Yeah, that makes and sense. I check, you know, I'm like, I'm like Patty with the 10 times mirror, you know, watching the evolution of my face. <laughs> and luckily I'm still on camera. If I don't come on camera and you only see a blob that's black with my name, you'll know it didn't work. <laughs> so there you go geek science and beauty tips uh, all in one show it, we're definitely a single source supplier we've yep. got one one distributor uh nice lady and she she told me one day she called me and she was like um chris i gotta share with you i have i have like a face cream addiction i actually have a separate credit card that my husband doesn't know about so i can you know engage in my <laughs> face cream practice and i've put your product on my face and it's the best thing I've ever put on my face. And I'm like, and literally that was the conversation. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. I put it on my face now too. <laughs> well, I think the combination, I've also been doing aloe a aloe. lot. Yeah. Yeah. And um, my poor plant, you know, she was just big and beautiful. Now she's kind of shrinking because I keep coming with my scissors, but I'm starting to see some real improvements. So um, I have been experimenting with a lot of things on my face. I'm hoping we're going to be coming up with uh, some wonderful serums very soon so that uh, people don't have to fully, you know, peel and experiment, but they'll be able to do it uh, knowing that that's part of the process. So I like it much better than going to a, a clinic where they burn your skin to get the layers off. This is a lot more gentle. But I, I've been peeling for months. So, well, even just uh, the, the process of having Botox done. Just think about this for a minute. This is botulism. Right. It will kill you. And I've all, you know, again, it's like the difference between poison and medicine is dosage. But it's good to start out with a baseline of something that's reasonably organic friendly too. Yeah. This is. Yep. So let's arc over a little bit to kind of mm, – put a bow on this today. Um, I know that you have some interesting information about C60 and um, both viruses and cancers. So let's talk about that a little bit. Well, I think the, the, the thing that I like to share, right? So this is, you know, we're obviously going through some pretty crazy times. Right. Um, and it's very important not saying, not implying. No. Uh, because I think it's dangerous to say the say or imply kind of impact on on COVID. Uh, what I what I like to share is um, there's really five ways that our product impacts your immune positively impacts your immune system, uh, and these are these are the because of these five things. I actually FedEx extra bottles over to my mom, and a, and I have my mom taking uh, a double servings right now. So uh, number one, it's an antibacterial. It's a known antibacterial. Uh, you might ask, like, why do we want an antibacterial right now? If your body's fighting anything, then its immune system is compromised. So you just want to take that 
precaution. It's a known antiviral. So back in, in the 90s, when this was really kind of hot topic, uh, it was also the, the peak of the AIDS epidemics, or really the, the it, 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 it kind of feels like it, it came on the scene and peaked really right at the same time, but um, it was it known- didn't actually, It actually came on the scene in the very late 70s initially, and then started to creep in, in the early 80s. It, yeah, you know, by the late night, late eighties, early nineties, it was like we knew we had a problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and it was around that time. So remember, the uh, Nobel Prize was awarded in ninety mm-hmm. six. So exactly. it was right in that time frame. Yep. Uh, and they knew that the presence of of carbon sixty uh, in a petri dish with the AIDS virus would actually inhibit the replication of the AIDS virus. Uh, and there's actually patents associated with C sixty and the in- inhibition of the replication of the AIDS virus. So we know it's antiviral. Uh, it's an antioxidant. It's one hundred and seventy two times more powerful than vitamin. And see, uh, according to at least one study. And then you have to be really careful uh, with the FDA when you say things like anti-inflammatory. Uh, the FDA has equated uh, anti-inflammatory or inflammation with disease, um, which scientifically we know is not true. You can go exercise and feel like swollen knees and ankles or whatever. That's clearly not a disease, uh, but they've chosen that. So I, I like to just say that it's part of, a, of an anti-inflammatory diet, similar to the Mediterranean diet, right? The Mediterranean diet and yeah. anti-inflammatory diets in general yes. are known to have reduced incidences of Alzheimer's. Uh, they're known to, uh, like the, that's like a blue region where the people in who are on the Mediterranean diet in that region. And again, uh, heavy in olive oil. In olive oil. Yeah. Yes. They, they eat a lot of olive oil. Exactly. Yes. Um, so so a part of an anti-inflammatory diet. And then maybe, I don't know if this is maybe the most important or just another one, uh, is sleep. Our customers typically report that yes. they take it in the morning, they've got mental focus and energy during the day, and then they sleep better that night. Um, there's only, like in my, in my awareness, there's only two things that can help you, that, that you would do in the morning that can help you sleep at night. One of them is exercise, like so exercising in the morning as opposed to not exercising in the morning, you'll sleep better if you exercise in the morning. Uh, and then the other one is getting exposure to sunlight uh, because that'll just get your circadian rhythm in sync with night and day uh, and that can help. Other than that, most quote unquote sleep aids, especially the prescription ones, knock you out right before you go to sleep uh, and, and then they don't let you get your, you know, there's a book called Why We Sleep and it talks about uh, the two billion dollar sleep aid industry, and how you yeah. don 't get proper uh, restorative sleep when you 're on these sleep aids you it just releases the chemical pressure to desire sleep, so you wake up and you don 't feel like you need sleep, but you haven 't gotten the healing proper you know uh, experience of of rem and n rem sleep so uh, when our customers are reporting better sleep, sleep is good for your mental, physical, and emotional well being We know that if you 're emotionally more well, then your immune system is better. You you know that if you're physically well, your immune system better, uh, emotional and your physical, emotional and what what, what was the other one? Emotional, physical, and mental, mental. And then mentally, if you're, if you're in more balance or if you're well, uh, then, then you're going to, your immune system is going to be hand. So again, not saying that this has any direct, um, impact. It is the reason I FedEx extra bottles to my mom and have her taking uh, double serving sizes right now. Yeah. It's interesting because, you know, we know so little right now about COVID-19 and, but what we do know that this is basically RNA product that's, that's breaking off of the body. It's a natural process. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that barring engineering these viruses, this is a natural process that the body itself is actually throwing off. Um, one of the reasons why they focus so much in, in, in virology on animals and specifically dogs, although bats obviously got introduced into this, in this last round, is that we, we know that canine produce a very high level of the corona, which is a naturally occurring viral product that is thrown off of the RNA. Along with that is our biology isn't just a chemical system. Just as we talked about C60 and specifically C60 Evo being essentially an application of physics brought into the world 
of healing and health, so also do we need to look at our body as an entire system. It's an energetic system. Stress comes from all the things that you just mentioned. And any, any benefits that we see from a product are the result of a coordinated effort on a lot of fronts in terms of what we put into ourselves, what we invest. Uh, all of it, exercise, sunlight, water. I can't stress enough how much people are dehydrated. I'm a yeah. freak about water and pure water. That's, if, I, if I had to pick maybe aside from basic foods, it would be water, C60, and some really core grains, vegetables, and fruits. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a vegetarian, but it's a holistic system. So when we talk about this, the benefits of C60 or any product, we're talking about a holistic system that brings in the product as part of an overall thrust towards health itself. Yeah, absolutely. That was, that was, I, I like how you wrapped everything into a beautiful bow. That was really good. There we go. There we go. I'm the, I'm the bow tire. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm the documentarian. So I'm going to title it the miracle molecule ESS60 because it is. it is whole body. When something can affect your brain because everything else is working and coordinated, yeah. that's something that you yeah. want to be putting in yourself. I'd like, I'd like to think that what we're doing is good stuff. I think yeah. I'm proud of this product. I'm happy with it. I can't tell you a miracle story right now. What I can tell you is I'm not sick and my health has improved tremendously. And over a long period of time of taking this product, I am noticing more vibrancy, more energy, and an overall, frankly, happier aspect of my sometimes rather dark personality. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's, that's what happens when you do conspiracy based radio for, for a decade is you wind up with the shadow side of yourself coming out. So <laughs> we're exploring the side of light too. There's a lot of light in this. I think, I think, uh, that I notice a difference in your energy, Randy, from, yeah. from the last couple of podcasts yeah. or, you know, broadcast podcast, podcast YouTube guess. videos that we've done. Yeah. You do yeah. look and sound better. It's a good time. So yeah. despite where we're at right now in history, the arc for humanity is good. And um, I'm proud of, of what work you're doing. And I'm thankful to Patty because Patty has been very persistent with me about the C60 Evo. So we're going to wrap this up. Um, last round, anybody want to be heard saying anything? Well, your the, miracle uh, story was that you're well. My miracle story is I'm still alive. You're still alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and if it weren't for ESS60 and C60 Evo, I can pretty much guarantee I wouldn't be in this shape. I've been tested for sure. And I'm not young, but I feel better than I have in a long time. And um, I'm really proud to be working with Chris and Rob because they're doing it right. And it makes it really easy for me. And you have a beautiful background there as well. Thank you. Yes, it's a big rock wall in my house. It's like a really nice grotto. Chris? Uh, all I would add is I, I just like the kind of story that I started with. Like, let's just everybody be kind to each other. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I applaud that you found. And, and I think there's, I, I, I tend to, I know that there's a lot of people who are just going through whatever the worst time of their yeah. lives yeah. And, and just try and find like, here, here's what I would say. Um, find the things that you control can control and, and then work on controlling them and the things that you can't control do your best. I know it's not easy, but just let them go. Um, because, because if you can't control it, like then you're, and you're trying to control it, that's just frustrating. It's going to cause more frustration and, and that's just going to cause more stress. That's going to cause more uh, immune, system, immune system impairment. Um, so yeah, control those things you can control. Let the other ones go. Yeah. All right. That's going to wrap it up. Um, there's links down below there in your video and there'll be a link there as well for you to uh, ad advantage yourself to your initial purchase and that helps us out that's going to help you out tremendously um take some time to really look at life from the side that we are passing through something dark into something that's a vibrant and brilliant future 
I'm Randy Moggins. This is Off Planet Radio. The truth is out there. It's inside you. Feed it with care and love, and we'll see you in the next show. This is Off Planet Radio. Thank you.